بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ونحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا السلام عليكم peace and blessings be upon you all it is an extraordinary honor privilege to be here in southern california um, uh, i was sitting at the table with your new president I thought the Data Boys was like a squad from South California, and I found out it was just a, uh, 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 a Hyderabadi clan. <laughs> That's a lot. Where was the clan from? A Gujarati clan. But um, I really want to acknowledge and commend the Shura Council, Dr. Muzammar Siddiqui, all of you for extraordinary uh, milestone on this 25th anniversary. Uh, can you give it up for everyone that has made this possible in this room? I, I want to also, you know, being here in this community uh, filled with people that I love, it's always such an honor and blessing to come here. You have institutions like Islah and Jihad Sophia. Can we give it up for all the extraordinary work with Jihad and Umma Clinic in South Central? Uh, we have all the extraordinary, you know, Bayan that I have, I, I, I'm on faculty for, uh, Dr. Muzemin Siddiqui, I've, uh, all the extraordinary in, uh, initiatives that are going on uh, across this larger LA area. Such a phenomenal model, not only for all of you here, but all of us across the country. And as a person who's been working, trying to build a model in Chicago and Atlanta that is relevant to communities across the country, this is very important. I want to begin also though, as I think we always should, and I know it's always hard when food is being served, and, and obviously we have lots of important conversations at tables, but if we can take a, a silent moment to acknowledge the original caretakers of the land, this practice of acknowledging First Nation communities is not just an empty perfunctory ritual. This should be consistent with all of the Muslim teachings that honor those who are most connected to what our dear beloved Prophet وسلم, honored, which is the earth. And he said, the earth is your mother. And our no community in this lands have honored and come from that more than our First Nation communities. Our Prophet وسلم, also taught companions to respect those who have been the most oppressed in the land. When he told Mu'ad ibn Jabal when he was going to Yemen, he did not qualify who the Madhloom were with an adjective of, about their faith identities. He said, fear, be mindful of the prayer of the oppressed. Because between the oppressed and God, there is no curtain. On this land, on where we are standing, the blood, the theft, the sacrifice of First Nation people should never be forgotten. And we should be among the communities that always lift that name up. So we honor them. We, we, we take heed of their memory and their legacy whenever we are on their land. Secondly, brothers and sisters, you know, I, I, I just, again, it, it's, we should, in this moment, I, I came and I, I have to apologize, I have to catch a red eye after this, so I won't be able to be here with you for the duration of this extraordinary event. And, you know, we are clearly in a moment, we should recognize the moment, and we should make dua for all of those who are sick and ill, all of our, our, our health care takers across the country and the world those who are sick in all of our communities, those who are struggling with this virus, especially those uh, in prison camps in China, millions that are, uh, that over a million, we hear about the places that are ground zero for this virus. Imagine those who are also locked in concentration camps, the experiences that they are undergoing. So we keep all of them in our du'as. And, you know, it, on a lighter note, it is a new day. You know, when I, when I got on the plane, every single person was sanitizing their seat. This is a fundraiser. Can, can raise your hand if you are like Lebanese, Arab from the, raise your hand, a couple of you. I, you're my people, I'm, you know, I'm Palestinian, from Jerusalem. 
I know my people well. So I know my people have all stocked up, not only on this because they're using it, but I know you all got it in some gas station somewhere, some of the resale shops. And uh, so tonight is a fundraiser. So inshallah, if you got, if people are making, even in difficult times, whether your stock portfolio is hit or not, we put our trust first and foremost in God. And we recognize that inshallah tonight, somewhere, somehow, Allah will give us the risk. But it is a reminder on a much more serious note how fragile we are often deluded by our technological prowess. But Allah reminds us, Mal hayat dunya ilamata al ghurur. No matter how intoxicated, no matter how impressed we get with the dunya, within a second, within minutes, within days, international travel can be shut down. Within moments, everything that we thought was normal will become no longer normal. The believers in this state don't run into a hyper state of anxiety. Yes, we tie our camels. We use sanitizers. But we also recognize that the same God we worshipped today is the same God that we worshipped a month ago, two months ago. And that Allah is large in charge and that we, we say Allah musta'an, we put our affairs in Allah. And we also recognize as a reminder, as the prophets reminded us, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ reminded us that we, during these moments, must reflect on the fragility of life, the fragility of our systems, and recognize the short time that we have on this earth, what better things could we be doing than gathering with our brothers and sisters in a noble effort like this to build community and celebrate that which is good on this earth. So with that, my message tonight is basic. It's really back to the basics. Sometimes there are moments in our life, in society, where it's a reminder. It's back to the basics. People that were being made fun of a month ago or a year ago now are being talked to for serious advice about how to potentially weather severe shortages of water or other things. People who are basically thinking about what the most essential aspects of life are. For us, back to the basics is also the spiritual basics. A reminder. In this ummah, we think about it. Our scholars, we have extraordinary scholarship. We have 1,400 years of extraordinary scholarship that have allowed us to per get and, and been preserved, and that's, an, that's a gift. But really, uh, in addition to that scholarship, our Prophet ﷺ, peace and blessings be upon him, had a very simple mission statement. It was a very basic mission statement. Among the ahadith that I think help articulate that is I was sent to help refine human character. Being a good human being. Akhlaq. Being a good human being. This was his mission statement. Yutemima. It wasn't to start it, it was to, to keep it going. It wasn't even to complete it, it was to continue it. The process, the project, the human project from time immemorial, to be decent human beings. That's what we strive to be. And this is a moment, and this is an opportunity to reflect on how as a community do we lift that up? Because I know thousands in Chicago, in Atlanta, in everywhere that I've worked over the last 25 years that really don't care about the details of your fiqh in the khutbah that are coming to stand with you be on the basis of am I interacting with a good human being? And oftentimes that doesn't need to get articulated with any lofty expression about what Islam is or is not. It is really the basic human interactions in our communities, in our clinics, in our engagements with one another. The ability to lift up and celebrate that human character. 
The Prophet ﷺ demonstrated it time and time again with seven-year-old boys who were trying to who were who were crying over the loss of a bird. You know that story. For older women who were leaving and fleeing towns because of some guy named Muhammad who was troublemaker and, and causing lots of chaos. With people who even cursed him. He was demonstrating the most refined human character. And he exemplified it. And he built up a nation who buried, among them were people who buried their own children alive. He raised up a generation of people who from now, from that point up until the, until the time of all times of accounting will be talked about as the best exemplars of the most refined human character. We must strive for it, aspire towards it, remind people that at the end of the day, with, if our institutions, if our interactions if I, are not generating an opportunity to exemplify what that good character looks like, that basic undergirding message of Islam, then we are failing. Then we are failing. I'd like to think that a community like this one, that you are here tonight, because of somebody who has inspired you to continue this great work. This is difficult work. It is taxing work. It is draining work. But there have been people along the way that, Muzammil, that our dear beloved brother and doctor and Sheikh Muzammil Siddiqui, many of whom may have passed away, who were exemplifiers of that good character. People like Ahsan Bagbi, people like Dr. Bilal Ware, others that will be coming on the stage that I know that have inspired me that, that Dr. Ahsan I knew now have known for almost 20 years. Never has stopped doing the work. Never stopped smiling in the face of some of the most greatest, ad, uh, some of the greatest uh, difficulties and challenges about building community. And in doing so, exemplify character for me that makes those stories of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu come alive. So, some, so the first back to basic is just good character. That is the core of the mission. And sometimes, again, our sisters, you, you can talk to communities. You don't have to have, they don't need, a, uh, they don't need a, a lecture or they don't need a particular Quranic ayah or a scripture to tell them what good character is. Most human beings have an internal radar that can sense that right away. Secondly, we are constantly told that this is the best ummah to come from Nas, the Ukhrijut Nas. So this is the best ummah that would come out of the community. What does it mean to aspire to be the Khayrul Ummatan? What does it mean to be that best ummah? And I'd like to say that what we're doing here tonight is an exemplification of that. But as a community in North America, we must continue to do more. And I started by acknowledging First Nation communities and as a Palestinian who has a connection to the loss of land that is very, very, very sacred to me, and brothers and sisters, we are in North America, we are Muslim, and we are Im many of us who are immigrants, are children of immigrants, must first and foremost recognize that the, the narrative that must constantly be lifted, studied, and understood, and celebrated, not out of any particular nationalism, but out of, out of generosity, first and foremost to Allah, and because we believe in la yashkur al-nas, la yashkur Allah, the reason why the name Muhammad in America can be lifted up by a virtue of an American name is the sacrifice, oppression, and ongoing tenacity and perseverance of the black American Muslim experience, and that must be an experience that we value, that we lift up. There is no community in North America, there is no community in North America that over the last several hundred years has been more hospitable to Islam. There is no community in North America that is more rooted in Islam. There is no community in North America that has been standing shoulder to shoulder. On my last trip to Philistine, I went with Muhammad Ali's daughter, Maryam, and she, to see what she meant, and because her father was a black American Muslim who stood up not only for Islam and being a Muslim, but stood up for basic human dignity. What that narrative meant to people across the globe. And so when I say this is not to make a rhetorical point. I'm not just saying this from a principal factual point. I'm saying if our shuras, if our board of directors, if our misajid don't reflect 
not only the representation of the black American Muslim community, and particularly women's voices in that community, and those need to be celebrated. But if we don't take time to study that narrative, to understand that narrative, to own that narrative as our own narrative, we are implicit in the project to diminish and silence the extraordinarily important voices of black Americans and black American Muslims particularly. So please join me in acknowledging the extraordinarily important voices of African American Muslims, not in word, but in deed, by making sure we are committed to the communities and to those representation and the issues that still continue to be at the heart of what it means to be a Muslim in America. <laughs> Lastly, for me, the back, back to basic, and I'll close with this. Our dear beloved Prophet وسلم, said it very clearly. All of us, again, did not qualify what type of Bani Adam. Every human being is in a state of, who is a state of struggle and error, who has sinned, who has faulted and oppressed his own soul or her soul. But the best of those who have done that are those who turn back, who make tawbah, turn back to the Creator. We must be a community that facilitates the turning back to that which is beautiful, to that which is the most loving, to the most merciful. We must constantly be a community that lifts up. That is a basic, integral facet of our community. That when everyone else has given up hope on certain communities, on certain individuals, that the Muslims are there reminding them that there's still beauty in them, that there's still light in them. The Prophet ﷺ reminded his community, even in the face of some of the most extraordinary horrors, that even though Hind literally grabbed and ate the flesh of his own uncle, that there is still good, and that we are a community that facilitates toba, that we open that up, that we never lock the doors, that we inspire it, again, less with our words and more with just who we are. If you've ever come across, and if you work in communities like the ones that I work in, and people like Jihad, and, and you've seen that, you've seen brothers who've just come up. I've had, I can't tell you the number of times people have come into Islam by nothing we said, simply by seeing a group of Muslims on the corner in the inner city, stopping in the middle of the day and afternoon, and just stepping shoulder to shoulder and just praying to God. And I've had people come up, they have just smoked a blunt, they may be high, and they said, can I pray with you? And I'm saying, Ahlan wa sahlan. I'm not going to deny you this. I'm not going to turn you away from this. I'm not going to give you some fiki position that says, you know, you're not in wudu right now. You can't. No. Ahlan wa sahlan. Come pray with us, bro. Come be with us. We're just praying to God. That's all we're doing. We're just dropping like the Jesus dropped in the Garden of Gethsemane. We're just dropping our heads to God. That's all we're doing. We're trying to become better human beings. We're turning back to the Most High. And we'll never, ever tire of turning back to the Most High no matter what condition we may find ourselves in, that that is a basic tenet of this extraordinary faith. And no way can you better facilitate that than building institutions and communities that have each other's back, that are willing, even through thick and thin, even through disagreement, through ikhtilaf, through all of the tensions and egos, to continue to open that door for one another for tawbah, for maghfirah, for forgiveness. Arham men fil ardi, hamaka men fil sama. Have mercy on that which is on earth so that which in heavens can have mercy on you. Forgive one another. Let's forgive one another tonight. If there's anyone in this room that has wronged you in any way, that knowingly or unknowingly, forgive them. Let's continue to build a community that, that supports one another, that lifts one another up, that celebrates one another. The Prophet وسلم, what's so beautiful about studying his seerah is that you understand that in his community there were not just perfect angels. You had people who were reared by the most refined human being who still got into disagreement, who still sometimes were actually even upset at the Prophet وسلم, when he gathered the Ansar after the Battle of Hunayn. They were upset and concerned that the Prophet ﷺ, peace and blessings be upon him, may have returned to his people. 
And the prophet had to assure them, I still love you. I'll say this in closing. We are a community that is encouraged to express love. Our prophet وسلم, encouraged men, grown men, Arabian thugs, Arabian 7th century thugs who were all gangstered out. Don't think you're too G'd up to go show this man some love. You know, one of the things I love about even Arab culture is as a Palestinian, when I go out, that, that still can find that in Arabic language, that grown men call each other, Ya Habibi, Kifak, Inta Ahle Rami Fil Balad. You're the best looking Rami in the Balad. Just an expression of love and affection. Those are things that remain in our culture that we should celebrate. We are an affectionate community. We should show each other affection, show each other love, forgive one another. I guarantee you, most of the beef that we have are often coming from people who have all extraordinary reasons for why I'm beefing with you, right? I can give you a bunch of philosophical, sociological, critical race theory reasons for why I'm beefing with you. But at the end of the day, oftentimes it's just, you didn't show me any love. I'm not feeling the love. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made sure people felt loved. That's why he was mahboob. He was loved. And this community here in southern Los Angeles, in the shadow of Disneyland, right? You all have the opportunity to celebrate a different type of coming together in love on this 25th anniversary. And God willing, that will help to sustain you for many, many more years to come and be an exemplar of that extraordinary model in difficult times and good times. May Allah continue to reward each and every one of you. And may Allah continue to elevate this community in all of its forms. And may God have mercy on each and every one of us. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.